Hello again, chaps. It is day 28, and I started this video because I just moved this swordsman down from here, and I saw something which I thought was important enough to include in a video, which is I saw a dwarven giant marching to the east. And considering this is the town producing giants, and this is our army going to capture it, and giants are extremely powerful, we definitely want the Frostlings to not realise that we're about to attack them. And the fact that that giant is moving east almost certainly means that they're not going to have a proper defence in this region. And um, that is very good news. That is... That bodes very well for our assault on this town. And we'll take this. We'll take this little halfling hamlet and then we'll take this town afterwards. And then we'll double back and maybe we'll leave some dire penguins in the sea over here and everything else we'll take over here. And then we'll focus more on defense because once we've taken this town, hmm, see what will happen when we take this town is we'll want to convert it to our ethnic groups which is the Dark Elves and that will require us to garrison it to keep the dwarves in line while we ethnically cleanse them. Um, so, if we then advance while leaving a garrison here, our army might not be that strong. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I've made way too many troops this game, as you can see from my terrible treasury, which is in a very weak state. So I should probably just take the offensive completely. Waltz down here, take this, take this, and then also try and take that place. Over here, the Frostlings will almost immediately break off their war against the Goblins, and they will attack me here and here and underground here through this passageway most likely and that's another thing in my last video I talked about how I moved these rams back so that the lurker that was here wouldn't possibly move forward and see them it only has two hexes of vision in the underworld because lurkers it's a giant frog uh, giant frogs don't have night vision and we don't want them to see the battering ram. If they see a bunch of archers, then they think, oh, okay, he's just going to guard this city. If they see two battering rams, then he knows what's up, which is two battering rams coming to conquer this lizardman town right here. Not by themselves. They'll take the garrison with them. Now, moving them forward like that was a bit of a gamble because he might double back and scout me here. I'm not sure. He might... One, two, three, four, five... Yeah, he can actually scout me there. If... You know what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two... Th he can move seven hexes with this level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we put a, uh, a soldier here and another soldier here, he won't be able to move his lurker to see our battering rams. And he ob also probably won't realise that we're up to anything, because we'll just be moving soldiers around. Like, who cares if we just have two soldiers there for no reason? Now the other route he could potentially find the back of these um, lurkers is if he goes here. I mean, if we put lurkers everywhere, it might get a bit obvious that we're... If we put soldiers just standing awkwardly in every, every single place... Let's actually use up their movement points so that it's not as obvious. That it's not as obvious that we're just leaving them there. Do these guys have cave crawling? They don't, so... Uh, hopefully it won't check. Now what's the next thing we're going to do? So now that we've done that, he actually cannot move this lurker into place where it can see these battering rats. Which is great. He's not going to know what's uh, going on. 
Hmm. Yeah, you can't you can't move see them from there either. He will see that I'm moving my garrison around, but I don't think that matters. The next thing we've got going on is we've got some troops down here. Now, dwarves actually don't have night vision, so which is a bit odd. So if one of them comes down here and stands here and then goes back up again just to check on them, they will see to there. So we can move these guys here without being spotted. Got a lizardman scout down here. There's probably nothing down here, but... I might as well scout everything if I can. Uh, another thing I should consider doing is just halting productions because I'm really running out of gold. Anyway, that's that's really all there is to say this turn. We had a our little goblin scout died to the orcs up here. That doesn't matter. Oh, and we also lost a battle. Yeah, we lost some troops, but we're just trying to get rid of troops because we have way too many of them. Take that power node back from the orcs. Now the question is, where do I attack the orcs next? And I think the answer is that I should probably go down here. Hmm, that's the thing is though, if this elephant dies then I have no means of capturing walled structures, which would be very bad news for me. And another thing is that we actually want to know what's going on up here. How do we scout that without just dying? Okay, so it's an Azrak town. He's going to be making elephants there. And if we capture it, then we can make an elephant every two turns or so. I think that is a much more important objective than going down here. On the other hand, he probably won't defend this watchtower because it's not that important. I mean, he might have the forces to hand to just splatter all of these guys, but he might not. So let's advance here. Let's keep our lizard... Let's assemble our lizard men into one mighty block of eight. In fact, not only are they a multi-block of eight, they even have some suitable medals. So we should be able to control this river, even if we get nothing else out of these orcs. The next order of business is to cancel this, because we do not need to be making mediocre human archers at this point in the game. Definitely don't need to be. I think when war breaks out with the Frostlings, what will happen is that I capture this area successfully, I capture this town successfully, and then the Frostling main force, which is up here somewhere, comes and makes me regret my sinful deeds. We'll just have to wait and see though, there's no way to find out except attacking them, and that is what we're going to do. The halflings seem quiescent now. They don't appear to be doing. Ooh, I spoke too soon. That's quite da That is extremely dangerous. Two ballistae. Like when when ballistas are on the field, it means that you can't really march on to the field with a value with a valuable target like a hero until they get 10 defense or something, or you have a healer with you, or something. Anyway, it's time for the main activity, which is marching these guys up here. Now, the war starts when he sees my army here, and he has six hectares of vision. One, two, three, four, five, six from this structure. Now, the question is, what's the fastest and the answer to that is to get onto this road right actually we can walk through there can't we so the answer to that question is from this hex we want to go north it's as simple as that so 
So they're going to march there. The elephants are going to march there. The penguin is going to join these guys, I think. I don't know where they should be. They can join that stack. Oh yes, and the reason, another reason that I'm very pleased to see this giant walking west along this road is that it means the, arc, the, high, man player, the high man player up here, with whom I suggested a conspiracy against the Frostlings, haven't betrayed my plan to the Frostlings. If I can just attack out of the blue with several stacks against an undefended but highly valuable town, then it'll be devastating. And, you know, if I do beat the Frostlings and they can't actually counterattack properly and they just become a minor power up here somewhere, well, what happens to them? I mean, what happens to me? I become predominant. I become the most powerful player if I'm not already, but it would really cement my position. Currently I am powerful, but a lot of my power is due to spamming level 1 troops, and their maintenance is really draining my economy, and I don't have infrastructure invested. Like here I'm producing elephants, which are a tier 1 troop. Meanwhile the dwarves in this town up here, and maybe other towns too, they have high level troops, they have high level cities, they're training giants, they're training Possibly they're training Elven Rangers, or maybe they just rescued him from a prison or something. And the same with the Orcs, they could have, probably not, since they were fighting the Elves. Um, but yeah, it's possible that these other players have more advanced things. And in Age of Wonders, more advanced troops eventually just absolutely, once they have a few of them, you can destroy any number of these types of lower level troops. And what that mean and also when you combine that with the fact that I'm paying a lot of maintenance for these troops. So a level one troop, a tier one troop like these, costs four gold each. A tier four troop who can potentially kill five or ten level one troops by itself only costs ten, which is two and a half. So they're about five times as powerful, but only that they're twice as efficient in terms of their maintenance. The same can't be said of their training cost, but over time the higher powered troops become vastly more efficient than what I have. I, I'm very optimistic about this game though. I got the Lizardman player back on turn 16, attacked me here with his leader, he lost, and I got all of this area basically for free. And that was a huge boon. Also, I've been able to feed off the halflings quite nicely, get these three towns from them. I think the one... so there's two areas where I'm behind. The first is I don't have upgraded cities, or at least not very highly upgraded cities. And the second is that my heroes are not as good. I haven't done a very good job of feeding my heroes and getting them up to lots of defence. I'm pretty sure that by now the Frostling leader has ten defence, and mine only... Mine is just sitting around down here with seven. She just isn't very advanced. Let's think about the rest. We need to cancel some more productions. It's just... We're so poor. We're so drained economically. So... Next turn, I'll be moving my troops into this position down here, and that will be the real start of the war. Um, and while I'm at it, I should think about... Hmm. I should have moved these elephants up here a little. Maybe they'd be able to reach it. Because our attack's going to be delayed a bit here. Our attack down here won't be a surprise, so... This ranger will see it. He'll look... It's coming because this one will happen a turn before. Oh well. It'll still be good, I think. What about these elephants? No, they can't reach it anyway, so... They can't reach it any earlier than these guys. So I'm going to move these elephants down here to attack the orcs. Another thing I should think about is that... This guy could get quite irritating. 
I need a flying unit to catch him, otherwise he can just stand on mountains and he can stand on water. And he'll just be extremely irritating. I think I should move this guy here. I think I should move these guys up here too. And these guys. And yeah, there's not much more to say about this turn, I think. So I'm going to end it here. See you next time.